Welcome back! We are going today to do the installation of a Windows 2012 server, the installation of Active Directory and DHCP server as well as DNS. I have here in front of me a server that was freshly installed. So when it's freshly installed, you see that it gives it a non-pronounceable name. So we have to, to change that name. We'll change the name to AD1, like Active Directory 1. And we'll change also the work group that it becomes the domain uh, formation.local. So in order to do that, I will first of all look at the IP address of this server, which I want to have it in one of my network. So to change the IP address, I will go to the control panel, network and internet, and then there I go to network and sharing center, change adapter settings, and here I go to the properties. The ones I want to change are the one concerning IP version 4. And you see that they were set to being obtained automatically, which I changed this to the following address, 192.168.1.10. The subnet mask, I leave the one that will become by default. And the IP address of the gateway, uh, is 168.1.1. .1. I will also insert DNS and I will set them to 168.1.11 as the first one. And since this server will also be a DNS server, it will be the second DNS server. So meaning that by itself, it will be served as a DNS server. This is done. With this, I have now the settings that I'm interested in. I can close all that. The IP address has been changed, so we can close. And now we are ready to do our changes. So to do the change, I go here and you see there is a computer description. So I can call this AD1 for Active Directory 1. And what I want to do is to change at the same time the work group and the domain. So to change the name of the computer, I do it here, 81, you see, and domain, I will set it to formation.local. With this, I say OK. Now the server is researching on the network what is available. And it's telling us that an Active Directory domain control for domain formation.local could not be contacted. Ensure that the domain name is typed correctly. This is absolutely normal. It's what I wanted to have you seen. Because actually, we still don't have any domain controller, so we cannot register our server into that domain. To do that, we'll keep it within the work group. Okay. Now they are telling me that I must restart the computer to have those changes taken into consideration. It's what I will do. Restart now. As you see, I'm working in a virtual environment with, with a virtual box which is a really good situation. You have no fees to pay and it's perfect for that. So the server is now restarting. The server is now up and I'm going to, to enter into the server itself. Key in the password. The server manager is always the first thing to start. There is an option where you can untick this, but when you do installation and management, it's always a good thing to have this starting. So now we'll see what happened. The dashboard is telling us that there is the local servers and all the servers. So we'll go to the local server and we see there that the name of the local server has been changed 
we see also here down that the IP address has been changed. What we are interested in are the, the following parts, which we will find here under Manage. You see that under Manage will go into Add Roles and Features. And this is quite simple. We'll see that there are different options that are available, but we just say next. Role-based or feature-based installation, it's exactly what we want now. So next. It's selected by itself the only available server. You could have several. So for us, it's just fine like that. So next. And you see here all the possible roles. And what we, we want is simply Active Directory Domain. And for that, it's going to tell us that it needs an additional set of roles and functions. So we just say include management tools and we'll add all the features. This is done. We said we want also the DHCP server role. Again, it's adding things. So we just add the feature and the DNS server. Add the feature. With that, we are set. We are ready to move ahead. So next. Here, nothing special has to be added among the functions. So I just go down to, to show that they are all there. You can also click next. So now, so they say that it needs a DNS server to be installed on the network is what we are going to do. So we are just going to say next. For the DHCP server, uh, they are saying that we should have at least one IP static address for this computer. It's what we've done as a first change. So we can say OK. Now concerning the DNS server, DNS server integration with Active Directory Domain System automatically replicates DNS data along with other directory service data, make it easier to manage DNS. This is good. It means that we need a DNS server is what we are actually doing. Next. So now the system is telling us all what we want to install. This is just fine. It's a way to see uh, whether everything is there that we wanted. It's a checkup list. So we can just say install. So now the installation is starting of those additional roles. So the installation has been done. We, we see that uh, the Active Directory server is now installed. It tells us promote this server to a domain controller. So this is important and it's what we are going to, to do right now. So we promote this server to a domain controller and we have the following possibilities. Add a domain controller to an existing domain, add a new domain to an existing forest or add a new forest. Simply by going by the logic, actually, we don't have any domain, so we cannot add it to a domain. Since we don't have a domain, of course, we don't have an existing forest. So all what we want to do is to add here a new forest. And you see that some options went away. And our domain, it's now that we can define what I couldn't define before, which is formation locale. Now I click next and you see that during that time it's preparing the forest and the database that goes with Active Directory. So now you see that there are domain controllers options. What do they mean actually? You see it's proposing us that our domain is conformed to Windows Server 2012 R2. This means that you might have, like I have here, a fresh domain where it's just fine to go with that version. But you might also be integrating an older domain or you are creating a domain with older servers. So what they call here, it's the functional level. You see that 
Uh, you could have 2012 instead of 2012 R2. You could have 2008 R2 or 2008. These are the forest levels we could have. So in our case, we are lucky. It's a fresh new installation, so we take the 2012 R2. It's exactly the same that you could do at the level of the uh, server. I mean the domain. So we have here, as you see, uh, this is grayed out. And since we are installing the, the first server, of course, it's going to be with the DNS server and it's going to be the global catalog. The global catalog is where all the objects are detained. This option, which is to create a read-only domain controller, uh, I won't enter into it, but the principle is the following. It's that you could have a domain controller that, for example, you would put in a remote location where you don't want people to be able to change anything on that domain controller, but you want to have the local domain controller facility. The last option, which is really important, it's the possibility to restore your directory environment. So this you need absolutely to do it. So get ready with a, a password, which is quite special, uh, with capital letters, with uh, numbers, with punctuation signs. So I will take one. So I've chosen one, I hope you do so, and let's move ahead. Now we moved to the DNS configuration, which is absolutely right. There is no parent zone because this is going to be the parent zone. So we do the next. Do we want to add a NetBIOS name? choose it has chosen for us it takes the first part which is before the dot com so it's just fine and i will leave it like that now uh, the server is here proposing the different places where to log the database the logs the system volume for me it's just fine to work in that way Keep it simple, keep a single partition as big as possible. Now we are reviewing all the selections that were made, which are just fine, and we'll click Next. So now the system is going to check whether my system is ready with all what I need before to start that part of the installation. This is now done. It's telling us a few warnings. First of all, it says all prerequisite checks pass successfully. Click install to begin installation. So it means that we don't have any red flag telling us this won't go. So we can just move ahead to the installation. So it says that this was successful. So the domain controller is installed and it tells me that the computer is going to restart. Restarting, so it shuts down and it will restart. We quickly saw that uh, the DHCP was also shut down. So it means that it was installed. So now for the first time the security policy with the domain controller is going to be applied to this system and we are ready. 
So now we log into the system. And we see now that some new rows have been added. You see that among the servers, we have now a domain controller, ADDS, and we have a DHCP server, we have a DNS server, and we have, as we had before, file and storage services. So I'm going to look now a bit lower, and you can already see that the domain system controller, the Active Directory component, is telling us that it's fully working. It says that it has four rows and the DHCP server is also here available and active. For that, I will check now the local server and see the changes that we had. You see that now the, the computer name is the same as before 81, but the domain is now available, formation.local. So this is the setting we wanted to do so far. So with that, we have now a server which has Active Directory installed on it. It has DHCP DNS also installed. Now it is installed. So what we can go and look are the tools. And here down, I will select some tools and you will see that we have all different tools added for Active Directory. You see that uh, we have here the Active Directory users and computer. This we'll see later on how to use it. Below here, we have the DHCP tool that will help us to manage the DHCP server. And we have here the tool that will help us to manage the DNS server. So this is it for the moment. So with all that, it was that part of the installation that I wanted to show you in that video. So far, so good. So I think that now you can do it also on your own. I wish you a good time and a good day. See you soon. Bye.